welcome everybody my name is the IT guy and welcome to another video in this video I will be showing you how to dual boot Windows 10 or 7 for that matter it works on any version um, on a BIOS system that does not use U UEFI so uh, what's the difference here so you'll actually just see me uh, use the PopOS installer but I won't be using the EFI bootloader instead I will be using the grub bootloader which is included in PopOS itself so it's actually a lot easier to do it with the BIOS than with the EFI um, so let me start off by um, showing you that we are definitely working in a MBR system so let's go over to the disk management so we are working with the MBR partitioning Let's go over to disk zero, go over to properties, then go over to volumes. And as you can see, partition style is master boot record. So we are working with the master boot record partitioning style. And, uh, you know, we are also working with a regular BIOS instead of a UEFI firmware. So we're going to restart Windows 10. So this is on Windows 10. As, as I said before, this works on Windows 10, on Windows 7. I believe even eight and uh, Windows Vista for that matter. Uh, if you're still if you're still running that, um, it should work just the same for everything. But the the first thing you should you should also consider is that um, the Windows is already installed on the computer. So we are working with a, a Windows installation that's already on the computer, and we are going to install Pop OS next to that. So go ahead and restart the computer. And then uh, I do expect that you already have your uh, Pop! OS flash drive. If you do not, I'll link the video for uh, creating one in the top right corner of this video. So here we are in the Pop! OS installer. Of course, you will need to select your language first. So go ahead and select that. Then you'll sh choose your country. So this is just for a demo. So I'll be going the default here. And then let's choose our keyboard layout since we are in Belgium here. Um, I'm going to choose the Belgian layout. Right. And then we choose uh, the custom advanced option over here. And right over here, you will see um, modify partitions. So we're going to modify the partitions with um, G part of here. And what we'll need to do is basically the same thing as in the other tutorial. We'll need to uh, select the partition we want to shrink. So we're going to shrink our Windows partition. So resize move is the option we choose. Then over here, let's shrink it to, let's say half. Yeah, something like that. Just a little bit more for Windows, maybe. So Windows does use up a lot more disk space than Linux. So let's resize and move. And then what you want to do then is you want to create a new partition. So create a new one. And I recommend always to leave a little bit of disk space um, and I recommend about 4,000 megabytes. And you'll see why that is. So what you wanna do, of course, is uh, create it as a primary partition and the file system will be ext4. So go ahead and add that too. And then for the final uh, bit of disk space left, we're going to create our final partition and that partition is, um, let's see here, is the Linux swap partition. So go ahead and select the Linux swap option over here. And then you can click add. And once that's all been done, you should, it should look a little bit like this, depending on disk size, you know, the disk size will be a little bit different and depending on how much you allocate it, it might look a little bit different, but you know, you need an ext4 partition and you'll need a Linux swap partition. So uh, let's just apply all operations, then apply again. Now we can close this up. 
and then we can go ahead and uh, close G part it as well because we will no longer be needing that then after a few seconds our new partition table will appear select this one over here our new ext4 partition use partition go ahead and enable that and you don't have to format it because we already did we just created one and it's automatically formatted and then the second one you select the second one over here and you can uh, enable this partition as well and uh, it will be used as a swap partition it should say so automatically there we go and then erase and install and then we'll have to wait a couple of minutes for um, pop os to actually be installed on the partitions and after the installation is complete we'll reboot the computer we will be prompted in, we will be prompted by um, a grub bootloader menu and from there on forward we can choose our operating system so i'm not going to show the whole installation over here i'm just going to skip ahead to that specific moment and we will see uh, if the system boots So I've rebooted the computer right now and I had to use uh, the camera app for a while here so the audio, audio quality will be a bit different because it's a different microphone. But anyhow, we are now booted into the Grub uh, boot menu. So let's go ahead and select Ubuntu. It's going to say Ubuntu because PopOS is based on Ubuntu so the boot entry will be Ubuntu over here. We choose Ubuntu. there we go so here we are in the pop was installation menu so you can just go ahead and click next over here here you'll select your keyboard layout of course then your wi-fi i'm hooked on cable over here so go ahead and click next so this is all good and click next skip that and then enter your username and then choose a password Passwords do not match. And there we go. So PopOS seems to be working. Let's just quickly open up a browser over here. that seems to be fine yeah okay so of course we we want to dual boot this computer so let's see if we if we can actually still uh, go over into windows so let's restart pop os over here and we'll see the grub bootloader appear again and from there we can uh, choose the grub bootloader option windows 10 over here so the first time it's booting uh, windows might encounter some disk issues if you're running windows 7 spe specifically so we are booting into windows 10 and as you can see it works perfectly so again i want to really uh, stress this one don't panic if the computer itself is not booting immediately or it's, it was booting slower than before the first time it might be so because you need to keep in mind that you changed uh, some things in the partitions and windows might be a little bit uh, out of whack because it's uh, it's suddenly booting with a smaller partition so you got to give the computer a little bit more time to uh, recognize those changes and uh, adapt to that because it might be so that in Windows 7, for example, whenever I install this, whenever I do the dual boot installation on Windows 7, Windows 7 will by default start a check disk uh, because it notices some changes in the partitions. So that might be the reason why Windows is booting a little bit slower the first time you're doing, you're doing this after the, um, the initial installation of PopOS. So yeah, this was uh, actually just me showing you how, how to do the dual boot installation on Windows and Pop! OS using a BIOS system with an MBR partition style. 
Uh, I hope this video helped you out guys and if it did please leave a like and a comment below and if you want to see more of my videos please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!